Hello folks, it's me. I'm Biggie and I'm back and I decided against my better judgment to record one more session. Yeah, it's in <laughs> uh, we are so ever so close to fighting the end boss of Act 4. So I thought, hey, let's just go ahead and do that. That this is, yeah, this is Grim Dawn. Misfortunes in Melmoth, I forgot to say. But anyways, it is time for us to continue playing Grim Dawn, but I probably should pick the right screen first to make sure that everything's okay. So yeah, let us continue. Alright, we last left off, we needed to head into the Necropolis interior and uh, walk around, look for the um, blood wagons. It should be around here somewhere. Hey, thanks for helping out, Diamond's Chosen. There's three, three bud wagons that are randomly placed near and around the uh, Necropolis interior. There's one to the north, and I saw I just saw the one to the east. So let's head east. Yeah, which is around and down. I wonder if I can... Uh, there we go. Shortcut myself. Right through here. Thanks for the soul shard. Now let's head back up towards the northern part of this map. And here we have a totem. And I've accidentally trapped myself here, which is going to be slightly problematic. And by slightly problematic, I mean not at all. Got ourselves a Dreadnought foot pad, which is probably more suited to a knight. But I'll definitely take one of these Chthonic seals here. as we head towards this, which looks like the northern wagon. Let's grab a book. And let's see if a random star shows up in and around here. There we go. As we head back down there, using this little handy dandy route and this handy dandy shortcut. Oh, just gonna say this handy dandy shortcut. Right, so the shortcut doesn't work. There's this uh, one-shot chest, so we will save it for when we're level over level 50 to pick uh, those up. So that we have a better chance of getting a legendary item. I've also been told that I should wait until I'm actually at level 50 before facing Lord Grind, just so that... Um, I get myself something good from the one-shot chest, but it's not a guarantee. I am more interested in finishing this game. Well, up to Malmoth at the very least, and finishing the normal difficulty. Uh, 
But as you can see here, the guys are getting a bit tougher. Um, what an unbeliever. The, um, Right, let's keep going. Okay. What shall be our random topic of conversation for today? As I slowly shoot people up here. Hmm, guns? Maybe? Guns. I'm. I'm not. The. Uh, the thing about guns is that I never owned one, and I probably never will. Um. Over in Thailand, you're actually. Um. Oh, what's this? Secret entrance. Yep. Into a hidden spoils. Followed by this. Yeah. And some more hidden pathways here. Ah, it's weird. <coughs> hmm. But yeah, uh, I've never actually owned a gun. I've shot um, a gun at a firing range before. And uh, I'm not qualified to talk about firearms rights at all. Because, um, over here in Thailand, like, um, it's very different when we talk about guns. Guns, it, we, oh, oh, okay. Actually, I have to move backwards. Yeah. Um, we don't have, like, um, something like, uh, yeah, we do, I think we do need the permits to own a gun, but um, I think it's a little bit harder to come by. We're not like Japan, where guns are immediately confiscated and stuff, but... Shortcut, maybe? No. A little bit too optimistic for that. My sister lives in Vermont, where... Uh, everybody ha has a gun for hunting and such, you know? But like I said, I'm not qualified to talk about it. And speaking things like rights to bear arms in my channel just seems like a good way to get demonetized. But of course, my personal opinion is, um, I, is it safer? Well, it's kind of is without guns. Like, uh, but I think the problem in the U.S. is the like having a proper regulation rather than not. Like, you have to test for things like sanity or something? I'm not sure. But like I said, over here in Thailand, um, uh, guns are... Well, you have mandatory mil military service still. So yeah, we're, we're still in one of the few countries that uh, has conscription. And it's conscription by uh, lottery. So you either have to... Uh, serve in the reserve forces 
uh, when you are between the ages of um, 15 to 18. Uh, or you wait until you're 20 and then you go and pick a lottery. And if you fail at the lottery, you have two years mandatory military service. Um, I got out of it though because I was clinically obese. <laughs> so ba even back then I was categorized as disabled. And maybe deep down, that's one of the reasons why I was actually quite um, afraid of uh, not afraid, but, you know, I was reluctant to lose weight. I did lose a bunch of weight before. Before I was, um... Uh, 20. But I put it all back on. Once I had to come back for conscription. To dodge the draft. Yeah, and it, yeah, to be honest, that kind of, um, because of that little, uh, uh, exercise there, or lack thereof, more like, I was able to dodge the draft, and I always become reluctant to, um, lose weight since then. Because one thing is deep, not only deep down, I was scared of, I was going to get called back and say, hey, you dodged the draft, or... Which wouldn't happen anyways. So which is a... Uh, yeah. I think... I mean, look at my username. It's I'm Biggie. You know, it became... Like, being big became somewhat of an identity. And it's... It's not... Losing, losing weight isn't... Like, the tough part. It's giving up your kind of... Persona that you've come to been known for or been related to. I was definitely the, the biggest, the fattest guy in my group of friends. I kind of never kind of shook that title. I kind of um, supposed to quote unquote wear it with pride, but deep down I know that I uh, could lose weight if I uh, did the did my due diligence, but it took me realizing way too late. To realize that, hey, I need to treat my body better. And, um, yeah. Now, this is how I ended up. It's sad, but it's kind of, um, how things are. Cards that are dealt, so to speak. Let's read some more comic books here. And I have a tough choice to make. This adds plus two to fire strike. Um, also, it's an offhand weapon. So if I do this, then this. Yep. That should up my DPS a little bit. Yeah, very good. And here we are, the city of Logoran. Time to finish the final battle.
let's deal with these two. Let's go with number one and number eight. And we're pretty much done here. Never stood a chance. And now we can access the Elite difficulty. Zohan's better play. You better not mess with the Zohan. Alright. Let's actually warp back to Inquisitor Creed. At the good old fort of the Icon variety. To report back our quest here. You've returned. So our great moment of triumph is soured with tragedy. Yep, so Algrim got kidnapped here. But this was actually the end of the original adventure. So let me just have a look here. That was the end of the original un, uh, un, uh, of Grimdawn without the uh, extra uh, items, extra, whatchamacallit, Good, you're back. I DLC. I must have, you see, the Luminaria have long been aware of the Covenant. Um, let me just put my points in here. One's twos and threes and Excuse um what me. happened My to you and I were part of a small group that managed yeah so there was the original game of grim dawn complete um and there's three difficulty levels and f in four acts and then they came out with uh first the ashes of malmouth which added Acts 5 and 6. Which is all the stuff all the way up here. Ugden Bog, Barrel Home, and then the Lone Watch, Malmoth, and this area. So, I'm planning to head towards Malmoth and see how we go. But this is the wrong spot to go to. We need to head back to uh, the Burwich Village Rift. before we head up this way. And I think I'll just make it as far as I can. Uh, before having to... Um... This looks like a spot with the hidden stuff. I see some hidden paths there. Um, nothing too major, I believe. Alright, these don't drop stuff anymore. But yeah. We'll head out uh, the Malmas up uh, outskirts here and continue on our main quest. There's actually a hidden path under the bridge, if we so wish. But we don't need to go there in this difficulty level. We are actually interested in popping you. But... It's not uh, going to be very good, considering this is a level 20. area. So, wait a minute. I saw somebody in here.
Um, I think I messed that up somehow. Maybe. I don't know. Who cares? I didn't even know if he actually shot at me or he was around my aura. Either way, he did. Um, Ugden Bog and this general area remains one of my least favorite areas in the game. Because it's not very intuitive to walk around. Gonna end up lost in here, most definitely. And uh, reminds me of the uh, jungle levels in uh, in Diablo 2. It's just maze. And I just don't end up spending a lot of time here. There's a shop here if you want to go buy and sell some stuff, but I'm more interested in heading toward Coven's Refuge. And then I could backtrack into, these, into this general area if I so would desire. I do believe this chest contains Nain Stash, which is available to us if we head up and towards the left. Follow the road. And, um, Wendigos. I know what's the cool things that we could talk about. Uh, we could talk about paradoxes. Hmm. I love, um, I'm a big fan of paradoxes. Because it's only available to us as at least not um, spray the area with poison. Yep. This is Nain Stash, which we will come and collect once we hit uh, a high enough level. Level 50. That's the start of the legendary train. But we do have a nice uh, totem here. Essence, some carapace armor, and absolutely nothing of value. Wonderful. And as we head towards this direction, we get ourselves another uh, rift. And also, I do believe there's a guy over here that we need to pick up. Hopefully I'm right about this one.
If not, we need to do a bit of backtracking, which is, like I said, I'm not a fan. Oh, didn't bloom. That's nice. Didn't know these stumps dropped them. And yeah, we do need to backtrack. But um, we need to go into the den over here of Garaxus. And I do believe at around level 65, we'll start seeing the empowered versions of the Marauder items. Which will be cool. Hi, Caraxes. Please die. Okay, thank you. Shot in the heart of Caraxes. But, yeah, I do think it is a good time for me to uh, move towards this general direction. I'm getting things like bile launchers. Which is an interesting weapon choice. To say the least. But I do be okay. Dead end. Too bad. We need to head towards the right here. Grab some of these items. Ugdenbok howlers are is something quite important. Is our little quest area over here? No, I don't think so. But I remember having to head towards the right. And once we are here... We'll head up. And we'll head towards the Coven's Refuge. Yes, a bunch of witches. There's our warp point, and as you can see, our stash guy is over here. It's a nice little meeting up point, because this is a nice area to farm for items and things. Seeing an inquisitor. <laughs> and if you seek a path, all rooms, what you ask yeah, but it's a I we have a deal. Okay, so we need to look for. Um, uh, and this now we have another faction we could talk to, which is uh, the Coven. And um, just sell. Ooh, I shouldn't willy nilly sell guns until I see what they can do. But yeah, I think this seems like a good stopping off point. It's me, I'm Biggie, and I'll be back next time. See you guys in a bit. But before I say goodbye, one more time, thanks for all the members, for being members and supporting the channel and its contents. Thanks to our um, Archilux for being the, uh, the top tier member uh, at the, uh, what's the level called, decision makers level, for basically sponsoring this game and uh, giving me uh, the idea to start playing ARPGs to improve my, my strength. It has really helped a lot. Thanks, Epilux. But that being said, uh, if you enjoyed the content, 
don't forget to leave a like on the video if you want to see more of this kind of content don't forget to leave a um uh don't forget to subscribe there we go uh and to see when these videos go up that being said thanks for joining in nope that's the wrong button but thanks for joining in it's me i'm biggie and i'll be back see you guys in a bit